The kidney is the major excretory organ in humans and one of its primary functions is urine formation. Each kidney contains about a million nephrons which are the basic functional units of the kidney and help in urine formation. Urine formation involves three major processes namely glomerular filtration or ultrafiltration, reabsorption and secretion. The first step in urine formation is the filtration of blood which takes place in the glomerulus and hence the name glomerular filtration. The pressure of blood in the glomerular capillaries forces the blood to pass through three layers namely the endothelium of the blood vessel or the capillary, the basement membrane of the glomerulus and the epithelium of Bowman's capsule. The epithelial cells in Bowman's capsule, also known as podocytes, are intricately arranged leaving a few minute openings called slit pores or filtration slits. These slits or membranes help in the filtration of blood and almost all the constituents of the plasma except the proteins pass into the lumen of Bowman's capsule. The reason why glomerular filtration is known as ultrafiltration. Did you know that on average, the human kidney filters about 1,100 to 1,200 milliliters of blood per minute, which is about one-fifth of the blood pumped out by each ventricle of the heart in a minute. The amount of filtrate formed in the Bowman's capsule of a nephron due to glomerular filtration in the kidneys every minute is called the glomerular filtration rate or GFR, which in a healthy individual is about 125 milliliters per minute or 180 liters per day. The blood pressure in the capillaries acts as a major force in glomerular filtration. Besides, there are certain intrinsic mechanisms in the kidneys that auto-regulate the GFR. The juxtaglomerular apparatus or JGA is one such microscopic structure that regulates the GFR. The JGA is formed by cellular modifications between the afferent and to some extent the efferent arteriole and the distal convoluted tubule or DCT of the same nephron at their point of contact. The juxtaglomerular cells release renin whenever there is a drop in the GFR which stimulates glomerular blood flow and normalizes the GFR. Did you know that of the 180 liters of glomerular filtrate formed per day, the amount of urine released is just 1.5 liters. This is because about 99% of the filtrate is reabsorbed in the renal tubules during the process of reabsorption. Reabsorption is performed by the tubular epithelial cells present in the different parts of the renal tubule through active or passive mechanisms while substances in the filtrate such as sodium, amino acids and glucose are absorbed by active transport, nitrogenous wastes are absorbed by passive transport. Water is also reabsorbed passively in the initial segments of the nephron. Apart from absorption, the cells in the renal tubule also selectively secrete substances such as potassium and hydrogen ions and ammonia into the filtrate to maintain the pH and ionic balance in body fluids. This process of reabsorption and secretion occurs in different parts of the renal tubule, namely the proximal convoluted tubule or PCT, Henle's loop and distal convoluted tubule. The collecting duct also takes part in the process. The proximal convoluted tubule is the section of the nephron situated between Bowman's capsule and Henle's loop. The glomerular filtrate from Bowman's capsule enters this tubule which is lined by cuboidal brush border epithelial cells 
that help to increase the surface area for reabsorption. The proximal convoluted tubule reabsorbs about 70 to 80 percent of the electrolytes and water and almost all the essential nutrients and vitamins. It also selectively secretes ammonia, hydrogen ions and potassium ions into the filtrate and absorbs bicarbonate to maintain the pH and ionic balance of body fluids. The proximal convoluted tubule is followed by Henle's loop where minimal reabsorption takes place. However, the region plays a vital role in maintaining the high osmolarity of medullary interstitial fluid. The descending limb of Henley's loop is permeable to water and almost impermeable to electrolytes, which helps concentrate the filtrate as it moves down. The ascending limb is permeable to electrolytes actively or passively and is impermeable to water. Therefore, electrolytes pass into the medullary fluid and dilute the concentrated filtrate as it passes upwards. Henley's loop is followed by the distal convoluted tubule where conditional reabsorption of water and sodium occurs. This region helps maintain the sodium-potassium balance and pH level in the blood by reabsorbing bicarbonate and selectively secreting potassium and hydrogen ions and ammonia. The distal convoluted tubules of several nephrons open into a straight tube called the collecting duct, which extends from the cortex of the kidney to the inner parts of the medulla. The duct helps to reabsorb water, thereby increasing the concentration of urine according to the body's state of hydration. It also maintains osmolarity by enabling small amounts of urea to pass into the medullary interstitium. Further, it selectively secretes hydrogen and potassium ions and maintains the ionic and pH balance of blood. Therefore, the nephron filters blood by reabsorbing substances that are needed and excreting the rest as urine. The urine produced by our body is around four times more concentrated than the initial filtrate, which reflects the conservation of water in the nephrons. Henley's loop and the vasa recta are the parts of the kidney that help concentrate the urine. A countercurrent is created in both these parts. This is because the direction of the flow of filtrate in the two limbs of Henley's loop and the flow of blood in the two limbs of the vasa recta are opposite. The countercurrent along with the proximity of Henley's loop to the vasa recta maintains an increasing osmolarity in the inner medullary interstitium. The difference in osmolarity between the cortex and the medulla is pronounced as we can see that the osmolarity in the cortex is 300 milliosmoles per liter while it is as high as 1200 milliosmoles per liter in the inner medulla. This difference in osmolarity is caused by the difference in the concentration of urea and sodium chloride. The sodium chloride that is transported through the ascending limb of Henley's loop is exchanged with the descending limb of the vasa recta. Then the ascending limb of the vasa recta returns the sodium chloride to the interstitium. In the same way, small amounts of urea entering the thin segment of the ascending limb of Henley's loop are transported back to the interstitium by the collecting tubule. This unique arrangement of the Henley's loop and the vasa recta together with the countercurrent mechanism help maintain the concentration gradient in the medulla which aids the easy passage of water from the collecting duct into the medulla due to osmosis thus concentrating the urine. Urine thus helps to eliminate the numerous waste compounds generated by our body. Urine formation is vital for human health and it is difficult to survive without producing and eliminating it.